It says we couldn't use your webcam video. Why is that? Your webcam is on, I, I can see. Yeah, just a minute. I don't know why or what's going on. Oh my God. I think. Let me. It's good that it happened right a few minutes back before. Yeah, it should be working now. So let me just set up my background effects. Otherwise, it's going to be a messy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yes. Yes, I think um, or everything will be good. So. Um, Yes, you see this screen, I know. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Yes, I'm all good. No issues whenever you want to go live. Yes, I've just popped us live. Mm -hmm. So yeah, feel free to feel free to start when you're ready. All right. Shall we start? Do we have do we have people? Yeah, we've got we've got people um, available. So maybe a minute until it hits six o'clock, and then we can go. All right. Yeah, that's fine. All right, I think we should kick off now. So hello everyone, whoever is connected so far. I can't see any of those. So uh, a warm welcome from my end. Um, thank you so much for connecting with us. And uh, so let's get started. What we are going to discuss today is. So According to various researches, bots are going to take nearly 20 to 30% of the market share in terms of customer services, task automation, or other retail uh, market sector. And it has been seen that some of the businesses have already started investing 
into these uh, solutions and uh, such as hospitals, banks or uh, and other retail sectors. So what we are going to see today is not going to be strange. Um, I'm sure you are going to get uh, a really productive uh, knowledge out of it and uh, we'll discuss some of the latest stuff with Mike, which, which Microsoft has released so far. Um, little about me, so I'm Farafar Tessin. I'm a Microsoft MVP from Sydney, Australia. Um, my category is AI. Uh, I'm a technical consultant for Virata. I am quite passionate about empowering every developer uh, to have the necessary applied AI skill set, uh, which is really um, an add-on to or, or necessary for today's market. And I'm quite hopeful, uh, as I said, that whatever we are going to discuss today, you are really going to enjoy. So let's see what do we have in our agenda today. So we have uh, we have to discuss today bots. So we will be going from basics of bots. What are bots? Uh, why do we care about them now? And uh, why why they are why they are needed now? And then we'll go towards the digital transformation. Uh, how they are impacting the or accelerating the digital transformation of organizations. Then we'll talk about the design principles and guidelines. Uh, what are the success factors of your bot? Uh, what makes your bot stand out in a, in, in a way that uh, it does, they don't get feared? Um, then we'll discuss what, what other tools do we have? What are the tool set we have uh, in terms of Microsoft ecosystem? Um, how can we develop bots? Using what ways can we develop bots? And then we'll discuss about one of those, uh, one of the latest features or one of the latest tools which Microsoft has released, and it has uh, uh, it has got really a big attention towards conversational AI space. So that is Bot Framework Composer, and we'll learn some latest uh, concepts around that as well. So moving on. Uh, Bots are the new apps. It has been said by the person who has transformed the industry and brought a great change to technology. Uh, if it is coming from something, someone like Satya, it really means that this is real, right? And this is not just a hype. So bots are uh, bots, what bots are, first let's discuss about this. So bots are basically the services which are used within your apps. Uh, in our context, these apps are conversational apps. Uh, this is becoming a new user interface paradigm. Uh, you can think of in this way that earlier we used to have uh, web emails and then the websites came in and the businesses were going towards uh, websites and they were just creating their websites to interact with interact with their customers then uh, a boom of mobile apps have come uh, has come and uh, then uh, mobile apps were, were being created and of course they are still being created but uh, every every business wanted to interact with their customers and they wanted uh, to be on the handheld devices of their customers so uh, now, in order to extend their outreach, customers' outreach, they are more inclined towards bots. And uh, there are several use cases which bots can be really useful. Uh, uh, where bots can be really useful and uh, they can beat uh, mobile and web experiences in that. So we'll, we, are, we are going to discuss that. Um, why are we discussing bots? So if you notice these icons, you can easily relate to the applications people are using in their day-to-day uh, -day, uh, life, either for personal or professional purposes. And uh, the, the tool set which we are going to discuss today, the technology is the framework which we are going to see today are capable enough to build the bots for all of these channels or the apps or, or whatever you want to name they, these, these customer channels. So uh, those tool set is, uh, are is extensive enough to build the bots for not only these, uh, but with the love of open source community. And since the um, since Microsoft has has gone open source, uh, uh, most of the frameworks have gone open source. 
Uh, so with the love of open source community, we have got the support of other channels as well. And now with the same technology, same tool set, same toolkit, you can create the bots for all of the other channels as well, such as Google Assistant, Twitter, Ring Central, Zoom, and WhatsApp as well. So this is really fantastic, and it this is one of the most extensive user, uh, most extensive framework to build the bots, uh, which is Microsoft Bot Framework. Uh, moving on, we have just just this is just a couple of statistics for you that uh, Gartner has labeled bots or agent interfaces as the third uh, top third digital trend for. Uh, for digital technology, so top third trend for digital technology. But then we have got some statistics that where bots are being deployed uh, in which industry sectors. And uh, I took a snapshot of, uh, of Google Trends that what people are looking for in terms of bots. So if you see uh, the graph is going higher and it's just one and a half year uh, span. Um, I've taken a screenshot from, so it means that this is really this is this is really real, right? So we we are not discussing something which is just a hype. So uh, we are going to see that where it is where they are really uh, deployed. And uh, as 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 I said, that bots are an asset to the digital transformation. So you can customers or businesses have. Customers have been using and businesses have been deploying their bots into these use cases already. So if you have got facts, you have got appointment booking, troubleshooting, uh, inside organizations for, for HR purposes, for, for support, bots are being deployed everywhere now. And the reason for this is, of course, it helps business leaders uh, to increase their sales. And some of the business leaders who have uh, they have reported that their chat chatbots have increased their sales by 67%, which is really cool. Now, uh, before we get into the implementation part of the bots, let's discuss something which is usually missed, uh, and uh, we will be discussing the guidelines, basic guidelines. What is what what it takes to develop or create a fantastic bot experience? Uh, there has been a lot of bots, but uh, you can see that some of them are just um, some of them are just just as bad as any any uh, normal uh, badly designed application. So we are going to see some of the success factors, and the first one is it must be used by people. So if you want to create a bot, you you should have some of the use cases that should compete for your users' time. Uh, against your bot and uh, the mobiles. So there should be some of the use cases uh, for which you really want to build the bots. Otherwise, it should not just be a part of your Facebook Messenger page, let's say, or your strategy that it should just be created and then it would be just lying or in that page and do nothing for the customers. You should prioritize the right factors. You should not just uh, embed everything to the bot, so it is not an app or a website where uh, you you must incorporate all the information of your organization or your business. Uh, just do just incorporate the or integrate the correct uh, methodology and uh, expose only those uh, features which are really required for the customers. Are some of the influencing factors which are considered as the success factors. However, they do not directly impact the success of a bot. Uh, they do the indirectly impact the success of the bot. But if you if you do not have AI embedded into your bot, it doesn't justify that your bots cannot be succeeded. Same goes for natural language processing and the voice support as well. What influences your bot success? is does it solve your user's problem in a short or quick way? Uh, is it available on the existing applications which your customers are using? Or if they are, dis it is discoverable enough, meaning that if bot interacts with your customer or you, uh, your customer interact with the bot, can they really figure it out that what they want, uh, what, what, they, what they are looking for? So 
Uh, yes, so this is this is really cool. And for this, you need to have a welcome message. Uh, so first and foremost uh, factor for your bot success, you can say after those what we have discussed should be the welcome message. Why? Because it is the key for the customer's retention. Uh, just to give you an example, if you see this message, how how hi may I help you? Um, if you encounter this message from a bot, um, I don't think or okay. If you try, even if you try to message that bot, you may not have an idea that why this message has come up to you. First of all, and what bot is capable of doing? Uh, what bot is capable of solving? So what problem is it solving? So if you notice these, uh, if you come across this message instead, you know that the bot is really uh, capable of doing these things. And similarly, you as a, if you are creating this experience, you do not have to um, cater for all of the exceptional use cases that you, if you have, you've got a flight bot and you are writing um, about the about the customer about visiting a beach. So anything you know, user can write anything. So you should be prioritizing your factors. You should have a proper welcome message for the customers. User experience should be a priority, whether you are building a bot, website, or an app. And for that, navigation patterns play a very important role. So there are two kind of navigation patterns. Uh, one of them is freeform or non-linear, where you allow customers to uh, interact in any way and your bot is capable enough to do uh, to, to solve users problem. Uh, this is one of the trickiest one or the or the difficult ones because you have to cater for all kinds of scenarios. The other one is sequential or guided where you tell the customers by providing the hints that what kind of user what kind of an input is it expected from the user. Um, so by doing this, you will save up your time in developing bots and your users time that what input is expected. So it's a win win for both. Um, then interruptions are natural. So in a natural conversation with humans, you you get interruptions and you must know how to handle them. So there's no right or wrong answer to that. Uh, I have listed down a couple of questions for your ease so you can you can answer it yourself according to your business value. So what do you want? Like, do you want to cancel out the previous conversation or you want to retain that and you want to answer customer first and then re do it again, like uh, switch back to the previous conversation again, or you just want to wipe off all the conversation and answer that, answer that customer. So it all depends upon you. Uh, moving on, then we have got design elements. So as we are going to see, the uh, Microsoft conversational uh, ecosystem and bot framework is the is the main engine behind that. So bot framework is capable enough of of supporting all the rich experiences uh, such as adaptive cards, images, carousels. Uh, these all are adaptive cards, as you can see on my screen, except for the right most bottom right bottom, uh, which is an out of the box uh, experience but uh, rest of them are adaptive cards. So it's really cool. So it gives you a capability to add rich interaction to your customers as well. Then we have got text and NLU support. So we have got these tools, uh, APIs available. You can embed uh, even Watson API, Alexa, Google Dialogue Flow with bot framework, and uh, it will work uh, seamlessly. Uh, however, Microsoft Lewis, since it's it's very uh, tightly coupled uh, with the bot framework composer, which we are going to discuss today. So you can really uh, use the power of Lewis. Um, then we have got the speech capabilities as well. Uh, so you can use cognitive services, uh, speech capability, and uh, you can also train your custom models, custom speech model with that. Moving on, we have got uh, so what we have seen today uh, till now that how do we wh what should we follow? What should not be followed now? How should we do that? So. From Microsoft conversational AI has got a bunch of tools, bunch of features for you uh, from enterprise assistant to power virtual agents to AI trained models to 
uh, Azure Bot Service to take the all the pay, pain of hosting channels, managing channels from you and giving you the support of uh, all the channels. Uh, you can just uh, enable the channels by just point and click experience. Uh, if someone wants to create the bots for their enterprise, you can use the virtual ex virtual assistant accelerator. Uh, if you are a developer, uh, you have got a bunch of tools um, for for building bots. So if you are from Java, Node.js background, you are from Python, you are from C Sharp .dot net. Uh, even if you have if you know Go, you can still create bots with uh, bot framework. If you are none of them, uh, if you want to create, if you still want to create the same experiences, but you are not a developer, um, you still want that, then you have got two options. One is Power Virtual Agent, the other one is Bot Framework Composer. So we are going to see the load, low code experience uh, today, which is Bot Framework Composer, and uh, I'm going to show you how you can build those bots. Moving on, before we get into the bot framework composer, let's learn three main concepts, which are the core for for creating bots. Now, uh, this, the first one is language understanding. So, language understanding is the core component of bot framework composer. It allows you to add the natural language capabilities to your bots. Um, it supports LG format, so the format which you see on the right side, if you are aware of LOS uh, or you are aware of any NLU or NLP model modeling techniques uh, like uh, all the modeling services, sorry, uh, like Alexa, or Google Dialogflow or IB Watson. So you have got intents and entities. Uh, you can define your intents and entities and utterances in a, in a way it, as it is shown in that in this picture on my right. So you can define intents, entities, and all the all of your language model by in an LG format. This is one of the new features which has been uh, released as a part of uh, Bot Framework Composer, and uh, uh, they all are in GA. So you can start creating your bots experiences for production as well. Uh, bot framework then it bot framework composer auto trains the language model as well. So uh, we are we are going to we are going to see that how can you do that. Language generation language generation is uh, one of the features for language generation is to give a natural user natural feel to the customer uh, by providing the various variations of the uh, messages. So if you see my small image. I'm sorry about that. I, I'm sure that you must be. It must be difficult for many of you to read, but on the top image you can see that I've defined two utterances. And uh, if I'm refreshing my bot or if I'm ref if I'm connecting it again, so it is giving me a different message. So it gives. So by doing that, it gives a natural feel. It does not just gives you a same message. And because of that, you can provide a, a good way uh, or a, a, a better greetings to your customers or the better messaging. It also separates the business logic from the presentation layer, which we are going to see in the demo. Uh, it also supports the rich card experiences. So uh, adaptive cards can be implemented using bot framework, uh, can be utilized using bot framework composer. Uh, we'll touch the adaptive cards part as well. If most of them, uh, if you or others are not aware of that. Adaptive expressions. So this is one of the last concepts which we are going to see today. Adaptive expressions are the are the expressions that evaluate the user input. So you can see some of the examples. I've I've, I've quoted two of the examples. Uh, I'm taking one of the flight number and I'm changing it to the upper cases by just providing a small syntax like to upper and then I've got a flight number entity. Uh, in the second image, I'm just checking the length of that. So this way we eliminate the need of code, writing code as well. And it is so fantastic that you can even 
we we have got range of pre-built functions and adaptive expressions but if you want to write your own you can do that as well so it's really good now bot framework composer so what is bot framework composer bot framework composer is an open source development tool it's all up uh, up and uh, up there on github so you can go check how microsoft team is building that you can even contribute to that so it's open source um, it's a visual authoring canvas what it does it allows you to build the bot by dragging and dropping experience and uh, it, it gives you the capability to add natural language capabilities within the bot framework composer so uh, you don't have to worry about managing the different Lewis applications on the Lewis portal, but you can manage everything from the bot framework composer, auto train them, publish them, and even publish them to Azure. So it's a ready to use runtime uh, in Microsoft Build 2020. Uh, the team has released the desktop version of uh, bot framework composer. So it's a desktop client is also available. So we'll see that part as well. Desktop client. And uh, I think before you go to the, before we dive into the demo part, we will need some couple of things. So for first you, in order to use Bot Framework Composer, you must download the client. As I said, uh, the desktop one, if you don't want to download the client, you can still build the GitHub code, which is there, the master branch. Uh, it is as good as the desktop client. So we'll be using both of them uh, and uh, bot framework emulator. So you need bot framework emulator to test your bot, what you are building. And if you want to publish your bot, you can always go and uh, have a trial for with Azure. I have uh, written a blog post, a detailed blog post on uh, uh, publishing as well and to create the flight tracker bot, uh, which we will be seeing today in our demo. But if you, if I, if I go too fast, if you don't understand something, and if you want to have a detailed discussion on what what I have done step by step, detailed guide on what I've done, so you can always go to this uh, uh, blog post and read that. Uh, the single source of truth for Bot Framework Composer is Microsoft Docs, so. It's good that if you want to learn the bot framework composer using my blog, how I did it, I would still say that to learn the concepts of bot framework composer, bot Microsoft Docs are the best place. And I've done, I've, I've learned from the same place as well. So let's dive into the demo and uh, I will just have to minimize my screen. So I'll just do that. Okay, so before we get into the bot framework composer part, let me do a couple of things. So, um, yeah, I'll just switch on my, yep. So this is the adaptive cards. Uh, adaptive cards, as I said that it's, a, it is basically a new way to deliver UI. And uh, uh, what it does that it gives you a G, like at the back end, it's just JSON and uh, you can embed into your different applications. So uh, how to embed into your different applications? Very simple. If you go to the get started, so it will you will be taken to the docs, Microsoft docs. But I will I will go back and I'll give you a quick hack if you want to learn bot framework, uh, sorry, adaptive cards. So you will go to the samples. And if you go to samples, you will see that uh, there are a lot of cards already built over here. And uh, you can see that how their JSON is generated and how they are rendered. Let's say you want to use this one, flight one, right? So you will just click on try it yourself and you will be taken to the designer. So this is the designer. It's a very simple drag and drop kind of stuff. So you can just drag and you can drop it and then you can 
write anything. So this this whole card is just a JSON, right? And it is getting created on the design uh, on the runtime. If you want to see how this bot, how this uh, card will be looking like and what applications are supported. So this is the host app. Bot framework web chat will be looking like this. If you want to see how Outlook will give you an experience. So you it is Outlook messages are uh, also supporting this adaptive cards. Microsoft team has got a support for adaptive cards. Um, and other channels as well also has got a support for adaptive cards. Uh, Windows timeline, Windows notifications, the notifications that you get on your Windows is also supported the adaptive card. So bunch of applications are supporting adaptive cards, mainly bots are supporting adaptive cards. They are really cool. Uh, fantastic user experience uh, to, to be embedded into your bots. Next, we will be moving. Uh, I'll just quickly. OK, OK, next we will be moving to Lewis. So before we move to Lewis, I'll just start the flight tracker. Yeah. OK, so this is this is the Lewis portal and when you will come over here, you will see that uh, this is the overall uh, web page of Lewis. When you will come over here, you will see that uh, book me a flight. This, these are a couple of utterances the team has given over here just to give you an example that how it will be. If if you as a user write an utterance, remind me to call my dad tomorrow. So what it will do, Lewis will return this as a JSON payload to your applications. And uh, if you do not understand what that means by this, I'll show you an example. So I've created a bank application, right? Uh, AMA bank. So I've created two intents with that. So what intents mean? Intents mean that what is the intention of your user? Uh, what do you want? What does your user want? So it's a, it's kind of a verb, right? So you have got two define you, you have defined two verbs: check balance and transfer funds. Um, in check balance, what I have done in my intent, I have uh, I have given some of the examples of of this intention. So this intent has got examples of uh, check balance. So how much left is my current account? How much do I have in my bank account? What is the status of my bank account? So I've defined a couple of utterances. It is a good practice to provide 10 distinguished utterances at least. And all of the intents must have the similar number of utterances in order to uh, for better training for the model of Lewis. Now you see, you can see that I've defined a couple of. Over here, there is a blue uh, line or red line. So what are these? These are the entities. So from the verb, from the sentences, I'm trying to extract the entities. Entities are nouns, right? So how good my saving account is doing? It means that I'm talking about account and in that account, I'm talking specifically about savings account. So what does this mean? In entities, I've defined a, uh, an entity which has got sub entities called current and savings. So same is the case what which I have done with transfer funds. Now, when I've defined my utterances, I've labeled my entities, I can train this. So this is already trained, but I'm just training it again. So my training is completed. If I go to test and if I say. So as soon as I've written, I want to check my balance. It has detected that the check balance intent has been detected with this score. If I go here, if I go here, it will give you a detail information of what happened in your Lewis response. However, if I say I want to trust. Right, so. It has given me a transfer funds, right? So these are a couple of uh, testing, which these are some of the testing which you can do from your portal. However, we have got composer, 
right? This is bot framework composer. Then you will, this is a desktop client. So you can see that this is a desktop client. I'm using 1.1, So this is uh, latest feature, uh, latest version of bot uh, framework composer. Uh, you can also build this code over here. So just to give you an example that I am, I have built this code uh, bot framework composer code as well. So I can use this or use this. It depends upon like it. I can use any of them. So just to give you an example that you can also build the code. So I'll be going through first with the desktop uh, client. They both are same by the way. So if we go and we see that. So this is the same experience. Right. This is the same experience. 100% uh, same, but let's talk about the this one. So if you want to create a simple bot, how will you do that? Uh, in order to create a simple bot, let's create it from here. So I'll just create a scratch bot from uh, very scratch and I'll just say uh, Microsoft, sorry. The reactor bot. As soon as I've created the reactor bot, it has shown me this uh, layout. And with one of the activity uh, conversation update activity. So what it will do, uh, it will. What is it doing? So just to give you an example. So what it is doing, it is giving you uh, an an option to see that whether the user which has got connected is the new user or not. So if it is if. If the user is new user, you can send a response to that user. So how you can just send the response to that user? You can just write hi, welcome to you. So I have given just these two utterances and I'll start the bot. When I start the bot, so you can see that it is loading. So it takes a little time when, when it is starting for the first time, right? And once it is started, you will see a test in emulator screen over here. So let it be, let it run over here. Meanwhile, we'll just start our Tracker, if we get time, we'll also show this. So yes, now it has started. I will just click on test in emulator. And I've just clicked on test in emulator. So bot framework emulator will be launching and uh, it has launched. So it will give me, uh, it will give me an, so sometimes what it does, it takes, it takes some time to load. So yes, it has given me a message. Welcome to the Microsoft Reactor Bot. So if I keep on refreshing it, you, you will see a different message as well. See, hey, welcome to the Microsoft Reactor Bot. How may I help you? So this was, this is LG, right? And this is one of the features of LG. We can define templates as well, and they can, uh, we, can we can get rid of all the messages from here, and we can just show uh, we can save it in the template. However, let's do one thing again. So uh, I'll just switch to my this one and I'll show you the full bot what I've done so you can have a better idea. So this is the EMA airline bot which I've created. So this is on the desktop now. Right and in 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 this bot what I've done I'm Instead of writing a message over here, I'm just showing, uh, I'm just calling a template. Where, where this template is residing, this template is residing in the bot responses part. So this is the welcome user template. I've defined it over here and I've defined the message, two messages. So either of them will be uh, shown to the customer, right? Uh, sorry, I'm launching it again. Mm 
Yes. So uh, then I've also defined a couple of intents. So how do you define intent? So you will come over here. You will just change the recognizer type as Lewis over here, right? And as soon as I as soon as you change the recognizer type as Lewis, and you will try to add a trigger, you can then you just have to provide your utterances over here, the same utterances over here, right? And once you provide these utterances, once you provide these utterances, whenever something which is similar to tracking of a flight is called, you will be called like is, is, is given to a bot, this trigger phrase will be triggered. So track flight will be triggered. And as soon as it gets triggered, you can do whatever with that. So what I'm doing as soon as it gets triggered, I'm calling another dialogue. This is my dialogue which I'm calling. So I've created three dialogues and I've got three triggers as well. So each trigger has got a different dialogue. So in this dialogue, in help dialogue, I'm just calling a help template, which is again defined over here. In this, um, in this tracking dialogue, I'm doing all the magic of a flight bot. So what I'm doing over here, we'll see. Let's first run this. So if, as you can see that it is publishing the application. So what it does, it just publish the Lewis app if there is any change. If there is no change, then it does not publish it, but just you get the message of getting published. Then I'll click on test an emulator and then another uh, instant of emulator will be launched. Uh, you will see a welcome message, right? So this is the welcome message. Now, I will say, hi, I want to track a flight. So, oops. So we have to, I'll just remove this bit. Yep, all good. So I'll just restart it. It's just reloading it again. Yeah, I'll, since it has, we don't have to launch it again. So I'll say, it should give me a response, and it has given me a response. So this, of course, this is not connected to any of the service right now. It is just a hard coded response, but it is showing us an adaptive card. How it is showing us adaptive card, and how did it detect and everything? So let's let's analyze. So I want to track a flight. So this, as soon as it gets tracked, as soon as it it gets triggered, it has called me. It has called a dialogue. In this dialogue, what I am doing. So our business logic is this: that if you get a flight number, you immediately show the response. If you don't get a flight number, you you must get either source or the source and destination. So if source is present, destination is not present, it will ask. If destination is present, if source is not present, it will also ask. So I'm just putting these into the memory objects of mine. And you can see that once I have got the entities as flight number, source or destination from Lewis, then I store them into my variables or the memory objects. Then I have put a very basic lo logic over here. So this logic is very simple. Um, it's just a bunch of ifs and else. Um, just to give you an example that what will happen if I provide just a source. So I, I want to track a flight from Sydney. So it will ask me what's the destination. And if I say Melbourne, so it will just show me the Melbourne and Sydney uh, flight um, uh, dialogue. So sorry, flight response. So this is the adaptive card as I as I told you earlier. So this is the same adaptive card. I have just modified the same adaptive card which I have shown you over here. Uh, the same adaptive card I have modified a bit and I've I've uh, made it like this. So this image is of course hard coded, but yes, you can you can change it dynamically as well, and I'll show you how you can do that. Uh, 
one more thing if you want to embed the interruptions as I discussed earlier. So I want to try a fly to Melbourne. So now let me just give you give it. Yes, I want to try a flight. To so it says what's the destination and by the way, you can also see that what is coming up. How you can you, if you want to debug, you can also see the trace of what Lewis has identified. So Lewis has identified source as Sydney. It has identified the tracking flight, as I said earlier. So now it is required. It, it requires destination, but before that, I, the user just asks help. And as soon as the user asks help, the help intent has detected again. And once the help intent has been detected, right? It has gone to the help dialog. And over help dialog, what is happening? I'm just sending a response, and the response is like this. So Either of these responses can be appeared over, can be appeared over here. So these one of the responses are appearing over here, and then it is asking me the destination again. And if I provide Melbourne, then of course it will give me a Melbourne. Uh, it will give me adaptive card. Uh, if you want to build, uh, if you want to embed the Azure Functions integration. If you want to call any API as well, you can also do that using Bot Framework Composer. So uh, simply, you just have to go over here. You will create a HTTP request. In that HTTP request, you just have to create a verb, right? And you have to provide a URL. In our case, the URL is this. So in our case, our URL is this. So what I will do, I will just write it over here. So my flight number is. This I have got it somewhere instead of writing it. So yes, my point is you can easily integrate the Azure. Um, uh, and just to give you an example that uh, how this is working. So these are my these were my um, intents uh, which I created the Lewis from and we will go back to this part in a bit. I wanted to show you something else as well. Yes, so how adaptive card is being shown. Let's run that first. How adaptive card is being shown. So I'm I'm just calling a template of adaptive card again. So this is the adaptive card. Uh, we'll go to the bot responses. If you go to the bot responses, we'll go to the tracking fly dialog. And over here, I'm defining the full activity of adaptive card. So you can see it, you can even dynamically set the adaptive cards values as well as I said. So you can even dynamically set the responses and uh, uh, whatever you want to as per your business case, you can set the properties of the adaptive card as well. So yes, uh, this is about it. Let me open up uh, the. Oops, I did a very wrong step. So, yeah, it let it get started and I'll show you the integrated. So just one moment, I'll show you the um, integration of Azure functions as well. So that would be the end of our demo. <clears throat> yeah.
Yes, so let's integrate Azure uh, function with this. So as I said that our function is running locally, so you can also host this function. We'll just define get as this. My URL is this, right? So I'm getting the flight number from the memory object, so, right? And uh, then I'm just setting it up in my response property of dialog, dialog.response. And uh, my content type, you can define it as JSON as well if you want. So let's, let's provide it JSON. Then I'm going to put, going to put a condition that how uh, if, the, if, if the value is freely coming as, as expected. So my condition would be um, if the dialog.response dialog dot response dot status code is equal to 200. So if it is 200, it means that it is OK. Then I am going to set a property. So I'm going to set a property. I'm going to store the conversation value. So like my flight number conversation dot flight, not flight details. details yes and then i'll just copy this from here yes so i'm just getting this uh, from my response content and then setting it up in my fly details now everything is set up uh, we'll just restart the bot again and we'll see what happens so now in if the flight number is there what it will do it will just go to the azure functions and then bring the response for us. I'll just refresh it. So I want to try. So what it is doing on the back end, it is firing up a request to the Azure and getting it back from the Azure's functions as a response and showing you over here. So we provided 8777. You can see 8777. Uh, if you want to uh, check what the response was, if you want to trace that as well, Bot Framework Emulator provides the capability of doing that. So you can go to the response request and everything, and you can see that there is how response is written. Uh, I'm, am I calling a real API service? No, I could not secure one. So I'm just populating this object and showing back to the uh, bot. So yeah, that's uh, that's uh, the integration for Azure Functions. So you can have, you can embed authentication, you can embed any other services as well. You can also call skills uh, from the Bot Framework Composer, built by Bot Framework Composer as well. So this is one of the features which I'm not going to discuss today, but you can export your bot as a skill. So a skill is a bot which is a pluggable bot for the another bot. So you, you can say a library or you can say a bot which can be plugged into other bots as well and extend the capability of that bot. So uh, that's about it from my demo. And uh, if you want to know, learn about what framework composer this is the uh, these are the resources um, you can always learn about what framework composer if you want to part of if you want to become a part of the community of bot builder what bot, bot framework so we have got a project on github called bot builder community project we and other like me and other bunch of mvps and some of the folks from Microsoft as well are heavily uh, act contributing over there. We are quite active over there. We are looking for fantastic contributions from you. If you want to be a part of that, uh, it's not just about code. It's about building a, big, a fantastic community for the bot lovers. So if you want, uh, if you are into, interested in that, please contact me after this um, from on my Twitter or, or LinkedIn or my blog anywhere and then we can have a word on that. Um, I think that's it about today. Um, so 
if you want to find me this is my these are my contact details if you have got any questions please feel free to ask or i can see if, they, if we have any questions uh, let it get loaded so where do you get the business okay cool so i'll start from when will be the okay it is being recorded this year uh, for someone starting out with bots do i need to know a particular type of coding language the answer is no uh, you don't need to know any coding language bot framework composer is 100% low code so you need to have these just expressions knowledge adaptive expressions should be your uh, go to place for that and uh, you don't need a coding knowledge uh, any any type of particular coding knowledge for that uh, you can build bots without coding knowledge yes and i have whatever i have shown you except for the functions part there was no code in that so yes you can do that what has been the most challenging experience with bots there are many so the first uh, challenge is the voice uh, capability. So we I've, I've, I've been associated with bots since 2017. And since then, every whenever you talk about the capabilities and extensibility of the bots, uh, we have seen improvements. But from the voice perspective on the voice side, uh, there's like I personally feel that there's still a lot of work needs to be done uh, in a seamless way so that people can interact seam seamlessly with bots. Uh, there are experiences which are already built in like Google Assistant or Alexa. Uh, Microsoft Bot Framework supports that. But if I want to build my own bot with the 100% voice support and all that, I can still do that today. Uh, but According to me, uh, what I've experienced so far, it, uh, it is a bit challenging. What approaches are there for doing testing? So yes, bot framework supports unit testing as well. So uh, X units and all that is 100% is supported. Uh, for bot framework composer, if you are building your bot with bot framework composer, if you want to test with that, so emulator should be your go to and they have got debugging capabilities as well in this bot framework. So uh, just to give you an example, you can see that debugging options are there. You can get a trace event. You can log to the console as well. So this, this is, and if you are talking about automation, 100% automation, uh, for that, there are tools available uh, out of this bot framework composer, which you can use. Where do you define the business logic of getting the flight number? Okay, so how I have, I'm, I'm getting the flight number. From the utterance, my lowest intent gets the idea or gets the intent that this is a tracking flight. And in my tracking flight, I have defined my tracking flight. Uh, I have defined my application, Lewis, Lewis uh, utterances over here. If you want to see in this exactly application, this exact application in Lewis portal, you can also see that. So I'll just go over here just to give you an example. So this is my uh, AMA Airlines Composer application. This is my application, which was there in, in uh, Composer. If I come over here in my tracking flight, track flight, so you can see that I've defined a couple of utterances and I've defined my entities. So this is my entity. Now coming to the logic part. So as soon as it gets detected, my entity is detected over here in my setting properties uh, panel. So what I'm doing, I'm just checking if the flight number, if if flight number is returned from the Lewis as a, as an entity, please set it up on the conversation dot flight details dot flight number. So conversation is one of the prop memory objects uh, out of four memory objects with bot framework support which are dialogue, user, um, turn, and conversation. So conversation memory object keeps the information about customer. Uh, user memory object keeps the information about user, which is getting connected, who's not getting connected, and all that, uh, and dialogues for the dialogues. So I'm putting all everything over here, like I'm just keeping it in my memory object, and after that, I'm referring it with my memory object, 
whenever I'm sending a response through my bot responses. If it does not answer your question, if you need more details on that, please let me know and I'll provide more details. Adaptive cards are cool. What is the level of customization that can be done for, for a business? This is adaptive cards layout uh, as I have shown you. So you can mod lev you can embed anything like they have now supporting. They are now supporting uh, submit events as well to the bots. So uh, I just just to give you a very quick example of a form like you can you can export it to PDF. You can approve. You can reject. You can get anything out of it. So from the submission of a form uh, to exporting to PDF. Uh, to to providing your inputs as well to providing the calendar inputs as well you can you can see all of them you will see uh, you will find out really interesting i'm interested in using bots in african languages and speech what possibilities currently exist lewis supports a lot of languages i'm not sure which how many languages do it lewis support but lewis support a lot of bunch of languages so can you please uh, uh, you can you can have a look at that if you find specifically if you don't find your language support like which is African language. If you don't find the support for that, please reach out to me. I will be happy to support you. And uh, if the support is there, I'll happy to support you and uh, to guide you that how can you build the uh, language uh, uh, specific board? This is very simple. No issues. What is the format of exported skill? OK, so exported skill. The, uh, the skills are supporting the manifest and uh, uh, it supports 2.1 version of manifest skill manifest 2.0 version of manifest so uh, when you when you create a ex when you export a skill you have to define the manifest in the in the schema of 2.1 version or 2.0 version if you are from virtual assistant accelerator background you may know about the skills a lot so you can just define your your manifest in a way that is expected for your other bots and uh, then you can of course see the exported skill. So there is full API support, 100% full API support. When you export a bot as a skill, if the bot was exported, gets updated, does the bot get the skill of auto update or does it needs to be re-exported? So you don't, yes, so if you are publishing the same bot as a skill, you don't have to do that because it is anyway getting updated. Um, in case of PVA, uh, you don't have to export the uh, you don't have to export it again explicitly. No, if you have published your bot, uh, like if you have published your skill, uh, which is also if it was also your bot, you don't have to be re-exported. It will be reflected right away. How do you unit test intents or utterances? You unit test the utterance. Uh, intents and utterances in Composer in the same way as I have shown you in Pot Framework Emulator. Uh, is there any knowledge studio corpus can be interfaced with the flow? Uh, yes, you can build your own knowledge bases and uh, there are a couple of strategies to do that. If you want to bring your knowledge studio or knowledge base to Q&A maker, that, that can also be done. If you have got your own knowledge base, uh, you don't want to uh, connect with any of the Microsoft services, but you just want to bring your own and connect with the flow, you can also do that. I think you need to have, uh, there are several ways to do that uh, as an API or any other ways as well. So uh, I've, not dig, uh, I've not experienced using the external ones, but I'm, I'm just aware of the Q&A maker. I hope it answers your questions. So if we don't have any other question. Uh, yes. Do we have any other question? No. Uh, Rajesh, if you if if your question has not been answered, uh, I may have uh, comprehended in a way in a, in a wrong way. Please, uh, if you can provide me more details of that uh, on Twitter or any other social media platform where you use. Uh, whatever you use, so I will be happy to answer you. Uh, is there anyone else? No, that seems to be it for now, Arafat. That's it then. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it. 
Uh, just take everyone through the upcoming yeah. events for the reactor. Um, just to note on that as well, I've also yes. popped Arafat's contact information in the chat. So yes. um, you're more than welcome to reach out to him if you've got any questions. But I'm just going to jump in and share my screen. Awesome. So as a lot of you may know, you'll be able to find out all the upcoming events that we have on our meetup page at meetup.com slash Microsoft Reactor Sydney. You can also find out all the global events that are coming up by following our Twitter. Um, you can also find all the recordings to the sessions we run here in Sydney and globally on our YouTube channel, and this one will be up there in the next couple of days. If you're interested in wanting to know more about the reactor or how you can get involved and potentially run a live stream event with us, just feel free to email us at reactorsid at microsoft.com. So a couple of the events that we have coming up next week, I thought I'll just take you quickly through. We've got a session next week on extended customized Microsoft Teams with Power Platform. So this is a session on building custom applications and automations in a low code environment. We've also got a Power BI 101 type session with what is Power BI and why should I care? This is gonna break down and tell you what it actually does, how can I use it in my day to day and if it's actually relevant to you. We then have another session called Learn and Build a Power App in an Hour. So it's going to be a very interesting session with one of our uh, Power App MVPs. Um, so it'll be a great session to attend. If you do have any feedback for our FRAT session today, um, please hit the link at aka.ms slash reactor slash survey with the event code 7703. I can also pop that in the chat for you as well. Um, We've already gone through the Q&A. I just want to thank everyone for joining us today. Thank you to Arafat for taking an hour out of his time this evening to take us all through the box compressor. Um, if you do have any other questions, feel free to reach out to any of us. Other than that, have a great night and we will see you next time. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.